H A T S H I P A R E Y O U. What ship are you? Along the coastline of the British Isles, Lloyd signal stations watch the ships of the world go by. Great liners, men of war, tramps, cargo steamers and coasters, big ships and little ships alike. Their movements all recorded by the men of the signal station. record is sent to Lloyd's at London, where in the index room, the movements of shipping everywhere are carefully and methodically listed, day by day. <laughs> Lloyd's, of course, occupies a very important place in the shipping world, important and unique. For the members of Lloyd's don't build ships, they don't sail ships, they don't, as a rule, own any ships. Yet round this great building in London, entry into which is strictly supervised, the whole maritime world revolves. Out of the original Association of Underwriters for Insurance, founded two and a half centuries ago, has grown up a whole range of services to shipping. Lloyd's itself as a body does not insure, but its members do. A broker, also a subscriber to Lloyd's, has been instructed on behalf of the owners to insure a ship's cargo. When the underwriter is free to see him, his name is called from the Russell. Lawrence Phillips, Papa. Before the underwriter will issue an insurance policy on the cargo, he must know something about the ship carrying the cargo. He'll look it up in the register book of Lloyd's Register of Shipping, which classifies all the ships of the world. The ship under review is the Armadillo and she's classified with a Maltese cross and a 100 A1, the highest possible grading for overseas ships. The armadillo was built in a British yard where skilled hands build the finest ships there are. This in itself is a guarantee of a sound, seaworthy job, but a 100 A1 means more than that. It means that right from the first plans and scale models, inspectors appointed by Lloyd's Register have tested every piece of material used. They've approved the workmanship at every stage in the ship's construction, down to the marking of the plimsoll line. Proof that when the vessel is ready for sea, she is thoroughly reliable and seaworthy. The best that skilled shipbuilders can turn up. Worthy of the classification given her in Lloyd's Register, 100 A1. In the index room, the underwriter will find details of the armadillo's maiden voyage from Liverpool to Valparaiso. On the basis of his knowledge of the ship and her outward voyage, the underwriter estimates the risk involved and ensures the valuable war cargo, the armadillos to bring from South America to Britain, against damage or total loss or both. In a sunny South American port, the armadillo takes her important cargo aboard. Nowadays, routes are not disclosed in advance. She may go round the Horn, or she may go up through Panama. Until the armadillo reaches Balboa, the route remains unknown to owners and underwriters. The ship's wireless can't be used these days in case enemy raiders intercept the message. So until the ship reaches its next port of call, which may be more than a thousand miles away, no report will be received. Out from the Panama Canal, the smooth seas give way to storms. Into those storms goes the armadillo good ship and a good crew. And somewhere in those hundreds of miles of ocean, the armadillo disappeared with its valuable cargo and a crew for whom thousands of miles away, mothers, sweethearts, wives and children are waiting, growing anxious, wondering if after all these years of seagoing, Alf, Bill or Charlie has at last fallen victim to the sea or the new dangers brought by war. The ship is long overdue. Somewhere along the route, the ship owner's agent replies by cable to Lloyd's at London, no news. 
As the days pass without word, anxiety grows. In such cases, very often, the Lloyds underwriters will seek to reduce their likely losses by reinsuring all or part of the insurance. To do this, they contact a broker specialising in reinsurance and he goes round disposing of parts of the liability. It's a very valuable cargo and with the ship long overdue, the risk is great, so the rate of insurance naturally increases. Driven off their course by severe storms, the crew have brought the armadillo safely into calmer waters. Land is sighted a few days late, but ship, crew and cargo are safe. Our arrival is reported to the shipping agent, who after verifying the news, cables it to Lloyd. In a case of such importance, the historic Lutine Bell is rung. Once would be for a loss, twice means that the ship is all right. The news of the ship's safe arrival at Bermuda is entered on the card in the index room. On her way home, the armadillo joins a convoy. It was Lloyd who first suggested the convoy idea as far back as the Napoleonic Wars and it has been the means of saving hundreds of ships from enemy attack. Off the signal station, the ship receives the change destination signal. In these days of war, ports of arrival often have to be changed at short notice. ship the instruction is noted, the course changed and the armadillo sets out on the last few miles of her homeward journey. Over the signal station is hoisted the flag of Lloyds of London, Lloyds Blue Ensign, known wherever the sea and the land meet. A liner out of Liverpool, a tanker from the Clyde, a hard run tramp from anywhere, a tug from Merseyside, a cattle boat from Birkenhead, a cola from the Tyne. All honour be to merchantmen, while any star shall shine. All honour be to merchantmen, and ships of all degree, in warlike dangers manifold, who sail and keep the sea, in peril of unlitten coast and death-besprinkled foam, who daily dare a hundred deaths to bring their cargoes home.